On today's show, I'm bringing you a brand new company that came on our radar approximately about uh, two or three months ago. The name of the company is B2 Digital Inc. And uh, you can find them on the OTC markets under the ticker symbol BTDG. And with us today is uh, Chris Lytle and also the CEO of the company, Mr. Greg Bell. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Well, it's nice to be here. Greg, if you would, just give us a little bit of a backstory of uh, what you guys do. Um, you know, 20 or 30 seconds of that, and then we're going to get, get into the uh, Q&A. Sure. Um, as a group, we've been involved in entertainment and uh, sports business for, you know, over 20 years, a lot of our executives. But we're doing three things with our company. I always like to be simple. One, we're building the feeder program for the UFC and the professional sports leagues in the MMA business, like UFC and Bellator. The second thing we're doing is we're building and uh, acquiring uh, – fitness facilities and turning them into MMA training facilities. And then the third thing we're doing is we've built our own digital distribution network where we can uh, broadcast our own live events and all of the photographs and posting, we call it the B2 social media network. Think of it as the television network of the future. Now, Greg, you you guys have about three or four different streams of, of revenue coming in. That being said, uh, can you help investors understand the way, how you make your money? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we, as I said, the three things, as we say, we're building the minor, the the feeder league or the minor league for the USC, um, and we have live events. We have two types of live events. We have uh, the live events where we actually uh, put on a live event and then we sell tickets. Uh, so we make our revenue comes in off of our ticket sales. Our average ticket sales about thirty dollars per ticket. We put between a thousand to twelve hundred fans in each one of the, the, the events. The second thing we just announced, which is really exciting, uh, we uh, just started the B2 Grappling Series, which is a live event. It's the reverse business model, though, the, the participants actually pay us uh, to participate in our live events. Uh, so we have in our live event, we have a, a event where we uh, put, pay to put on an event, and then we get more in ticket sales than we do. So we have that revenue stream there. And then the second is we have the new Grappling Series tournaments where participants actually pay us so when you say an average ticket is about 30 bucks for the live event an average registration for our grappling series is 45 dollars uh, uh, the second thing we do we're quite we've got the b2 training facilities which are actually full gyms fitness centers uh, which average we have our first one which is the one more gym we have 1500 members paying us on average 30 dollars um, a month to join and train in the facility and then the third revenue stream is our pay-per-view and our social media network. Uh, we've done limited revenue in that, but as we pivot into having both MMA fights uh, with very limited crowds, now our pay-per-view is very important. That average ticket is about $30. So briefly stated, we make money uh, by charging people to watch our live events. We make money uh, by charging people tournament fees, participate in our events, and then we have our reoccurring revenue streams in the gym, which is a great business because once you sign up, you have a customer for $30 a month on a reoccurring revenue stream that charges on their credit card. And then the third is we have all of the people at home now, they're going to do pay-per-view and watch um, our live events. So those are the three revenue streams. Chris, this question is for you. Uh, you. You're the fighter development, and also you're in charge of the B2 training facilities. That being said, what do you think the potential of another UFC is in the making from your company right here? And and the competition in this space, if you could expand on that a little bit. Sure. Well, to be honest with you, our, our goal is not really to be another UFC. Our goal is to be a developmental you know, the UFC is the UFC. That's like saying the NFL. We want to, or, or, or Major League Baseball. We want to be the AAA feeder system. Uh, that's what is missing from right now. It's been around for about 25 years, has the UFC, but they don't really have it developmentally. That's what you're talking about competition. There is no competition for us because there isn't a real developmental league that takes people from the beginning all the way to right when they're going to go to the next level. So. We are having competition free in that aspect, but like I said, the, the goal is not to beat the UFC. The goal is to work with the UFC. I got to tell you, gentlemen, I'm really impressed with the potential that you guys have here. Greg, back to you. Uh, speaking of potential, potential shareholders, 
a lot of them you know, are not familiar with the MMA. Uh, how are you going to bring this project to them and make them become maybe a possible shareholder? Well, I think, you know, what's happening out there is, you know, our, our stock is starting to climb. People are starting to uh, realize that we have a, a great vision and company and the uh, capital value, well, it's gone up here recently, was, you know, capital structure of less than $3 million was our cap value, which has almost doubled here recently. But the answer to your question is that we're really, there's a couple other guys out there, but we're really the only public company that you can invest in mixed martial arts. And in that live event business and we figured out how to the usc is our friend and the major leagues are our friend just like if you pay want to play for the chicago cubs you got to pay for the iowa cubs first and do really well and move up right you know we have we, we're basically doing a roll-up so we right now have mma fight licenses and grappling license to have events in 10 states and we have five brands think of them as fight teams so we have Calcium Combat of the B2 Fighting Series. We have HR MMA of the B2 Fighting Series. And then, um, so from an investor standpoint, it's the chance to get in at a ground floor at a, in a roll-up. Uh, so in other words, when I say a roll-up, so we have one gym now. So if you can imagine, we have the whole state of uh, Kentucky and Mississippi and uh, Alabama. Well, we don't have a gym there. So our plan is to raise capital through the public market, so basically to duplicate our model of the gym. So uh, each one of our states, you know, these these gyms do quite well. We have, you guys can do the math, you have 1,500 members on an average, you know, cash flow at 25 to $30 a month, and you go from 1 to 10 because what happens is as we take these gyms, we add all the fighters in the, that from the area. The, now we have cross-marketing. You know, the fighters come in, their fans come into the gym and sign up, and we've seen our gyms grow even with the virus. So from a investor perspective you know what's going on out now the virus has you know been awful and it's crushing a lot of companies the worse the virus gets and, and at some point it's gonna we don't want it to get worse obviously but our company the worse the virus gets the one thing that everybody wants to be is be healthy well they're not going to the restaurants and the bars but they are taking thirty dollars out of their pocket the serious people want to be healthy and joining the health clubs and then once the virus the vaccine or whatever happens and we're like right in there or like we we're you know uh, right ready to go and we're like we just announced we're gonna have 13 fights here like alabama's letting us have a fight with a limited crowd on august 29th so from an investor perspective number one it's a it's a large growth opportunity because all we're going to do now is duplicate what we've already done successfully and second, it's a very exciting, sticky business. MMA is not going anywhere. You can look it up. The UFC sold for over $4.5 billion, and we have all the systems in place to properly um, go through and do it. You know, we've gone through all the auditing, the SEC reporting, and all that kind of stuff, which, as everyone knows, is difficult. So I hope I answered your question. I'm trying to. No, you did. Chris, I got a question for you. When you were fighting, if the B2 fighting series – uh, say was available when you, when you were in the UFC. Do you think it would have helped you out? <laughs> oh, of course. Um, the funny thing is, we were we were like you know I was like the guy from I was like Rocky and Rocky Four back then, picking up <laughs> stones and carrying logs. I mean, we really were just figuring things out on our own. You would go to a gym and there might be a, a grappling gym, a jiu-jitsu gym, and then you'd have to go to a different gym to go to boxing. You have to go to a different gym to do weightlifting. And I remember when I went on the Ultimate Fighter, I, it was the first time I'd ever done plyometrics. And I, they were like, you know, I was like, what are these plyometrics you're talking about? They're like, well, Chris, how did you even make it this far? How did you get I mean, <laughs> so like, how, you, you don't do plyometrics? They're like, no, I didn't know what they are. So having something like this is just unbelievable. It's, a, it's all in one place. Um, just having something like this would have made fighting so much more easy and people would have got better at such an exponential rate. And that's kind of the goal here is to get people from – all over the Midwest, all over the South, it's kind of all over the middle of the country to be able to give them the opportunity to fight at the next level in the UFC because a lot of these places just have these big super camps, American top team, places out in New Mexico, just wherever. We don't have that all over the place, so this is their opportunity. Gentlemen, we got about a, a minute left in this show, and this, I guess this question goes out to the both of you. What are the three things investors uh, should be most excited about for the remainder of 2020? Well, number one, I think, is we figured out how to turn our business model uh, 
with dealing with the you know the live event business, we figure this out because we're entering the tournament business where there's no crowds, but yet we're still creating a forty-five dollar revenue stream. And then in limited fashion, with our new pay-per-view and everything, we we're able to turn back on and create that customer that is very sticky and continues to purchase. The the second thing is our roll-up that we're going to be accomplishing in in the gym business is going to go and make the revenue stream. Uh, continue to grow at a nice rate and get a good return for the shareholders. But I think in general when people ask me, what are you really doing, the answer is, you know, we're building the minor league. We're going to go out and acquire gyms. We figured out until the virus problem goes away, which who knows, is it 12 months, 18 months, pick a number. Is it six, pick right. a number. But we figured out how to pivot into a business that actually it's even – it's like really exciting again. Like our phones are ringing off the hook. You know, we got fighters calling us. Like, for example, we you know, we had our, announced our grappling series is going to be in – Hammond just outside of Chicago in the last week or so, we got people already paying us money to sign up. So we figured out how to take, you know, the awful virus and all the things that's gone on with that and kind of pivot our model and go, wow, this, you know, we figured this out. This thing's going to go. And, you know, we just scheduled 13 events. So I think, you know, number one, uh, it's a great business. It's sticky. MMA and live sports aren't going anywhere. And all the big guys are having trouble and we're still putting on events. And second, you know, we got a huge growth opportunity here with a very li- small cap structure that's going to take off, and it's a roll-up. So all we're doing is, um, you know, we've got one more gym, and instead of one of them, we're going to have ten of them, and you can do the math. So I, I think it's a very exciting company and a very exciting space, and we figured out how to, you know, with all the uh, COVID and the virus, to pivot our model till it's, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep trucking. We're going. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been very enlightening. Again, if you uh, want to get uh, in, into a great company that's a full-service live event sporting company, look no further than B2 Digital Inc. You can find them on the OTC markets, ticker symbol BTDG. And I want to thank you for guys for stopping by. Hopefully uh, you come on the show again, maybe in another 50 or 60 days, and give us an update. Yeah, we'd love to do that. We appreciate everybody listening to us. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by La Jolla Media LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are for educational and research purposes. Stock Day encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. 